now i'll just uh, i'm i created a new file here called the notebook name as files so let me show you in that files let me get inside the da file so here in the files i have just created a input and output file names okay so just i have derived an input and output and i have been executed i have been calling that notebook in the other notebook so my notebook name is complex now so let uh, and you can see here if someone is uh, executing this code i can see who has executed at what time and so on so let me do it from my end so i have imported all the functions now i am reading that file guys i as i have already shown you this is our json file we need to flatten this json file so this is my first column second third fourth but inside the batters column you have a batter inside there again it is a nested one like you have an id column and the type column and you have a toppings column in toppings you have id and type so how to get this in a structured format how to save it into a table this is highly nested so this example is brought by adobe complex json files guys you can find that in a google also so this is how the data looks like but once you get a data frame so we are doing it by data frame style pyspark style so data frame is uh, like we have created a data frame and you can see that let me display that data frame and you would see that is only one row so try to understand it is only one row guys it is only one row so you have a batters data you have id and so on if the data is a large data set if it is 1 gb of data millions of files then we strongly recommend you to create a schema for that by using an struct type and struct field so you can see it starts with struct type and then you have an array type inside the batters and so on so creating a schema for this data type might be a different topic we will do that later on but now let me explain you how to flatten this so i'll start using a data frame functions to do that i have already imported all the functions here now let me first focus on the toppings column okay let me focus on this toppings column if you just open this so i have an array so in one row you have so many records so first and the foremost thing is i'll explode this i'll explode this topic column so how to do that so i'll use data frame dot i'll use a function called i mean data frame function called with column and i'm using a toppings column only so whatever if i use the same toppings column name the changes will happen in the same existing column okay toppings and then i'll use a function called explode explode and i'm going to explode the topping column so if you just want to see a quick difference you can just use toppings as a new column name and then i'll use dot display dot display to see how does a new column actually looks like so let me zoom this okay now you end up getting a new column and that column name would be toppings new and you can just see you got seven rows now was only one row before so we have exploded this so how does the explode function works every array will be exploded in the row wise you can see every array will be exploded in the row wise there are seven uh i mean seven ids in this and it got exploded and you got seven rows but when you exploded this just try to understand other records also so every column got repeated you can see the id 0001 got repeated seven times the name take repeated seven times got repeated seven times and so on but actually i don't want this column anymore we are simply creating a new record just to show you what i'll do i'll just change this new i'll just remove it and i'll execute it again so now that will be replaced and you get a toppings column so, so the next point is i want to pull out the object which is inside the toppings column i want to refer this id column and the type column it is again very simple you can just use a two level name space here column name and then the object name and you would easily pull out that record here i'll use again a with column renamed data frame function data frame function get a new column name and that new column name would be obviously toppings underscore id and what you want in that i want a 
call i'm using a call function i'll be referring a topping column with a id so i'm using topping dot id i'm using a two level namespace here topping inside that refer an object id and give that mean a new column called topping underscore id you can use a dot here let me put a dot here and put a backslash here and then execute it you would see a new column that is coming up and let me show you yeah you can see topping id so from this 501 got a new column derived cool so let me quickly do for the type also very simple let me copy this and then push it into a new line and here instead of id i'll take up type the new column name would be topping underscore type and you are what you want inside that is topping dot type okay let me display this and you will see that oh let me put a backslash here now you see two new columns got derived uh two actually so one is toppings id and one is topping type now you don't need this column let me drop that column by just using a data frame function dot drop and then use a column name called topping okay so let me use a dot here and then execute it so this is how we are flattening one by one so we have it topping i think i the column name so Topping type. Okay, what I'll do, I'll just drop this after the class. after the with column because if I drop it before, so we need to pull out the uh, topping type from that. So that's why we got an error. So we need to drop it after you pull out the record school. And now you can see topping column is gone and you got topping ID and topping type. Cool. So this was exploded and then pull out the objects from that. But what about this batter? Still you have a batter's column, it is nested. So you can see it is object type. So first is again, you need to explode the batter's column and then you need to do the same thing what we have done it for toppings. What I'll do, I'll just keep it here for uh, toppings. Now I'll just create a new line here. I'll just start working with the batters column and then I'll merge it both. I'll merge both the things. Data frame dot I'll use with column now. With column, I'll use a batters column. Batters column. Let me explode function here again. But in this explode function, I'm using batters dot batter. So try to understand we are going to explode batters inside that. We are specially exploding this batter. Let me use dot display here. Dot display. Then execute. Yeah. Cool. And now you can see we got four elements or four records inside that batter. And that four records you can see it here. We have explored it. Now I'll just pull out batter's ID, batter's type, the same way how we done it for toppings. So let me copy this quickly. Give some time. I'll just copy it, push it into the new line. I'll just do it for two times. And I'll just take a backslash here. Okay, so here I want batter's underscore ID. I'm going to, I'm not going to explode it now. I'm going to use a call function. I'll pull out batter's dot ID from here. I use a call function here. I'll pull out batters dot type from it and I'll rename this column name as batters type. And if you remember, I need to drop it, right? I need to drop the batters column now. I don't need it anymore. So let me execute this and see how it looks like. So we should get four rows from this. Let me put a backslash here then execute. Yeah, cool. You can see four rows, but uh, what about toppings? Yeah, we will talk about that toppings. You can see batter ID, batter type is here. So I need to merge these two now. So I'll just copy this. I'll paste it here. And I'll copy this entire 
without a df and i'll paste it here okay okay what i'm doing here so these all lines of code is for batters and these all lines of code are for uh, toppings let me use dot display at the end here I can see uh, ID name type. Now we got batters ID, batters type, topping ID, topping type. And one row, once we exploded and solved everything, you can see there are 28 rows that got converted. Let me remove this display and I'm going to save this here as a data frame final. And I'm saving it into the new data frame as df final cool so now i'm going to write this data frame guys see i'm going to write this or oh, let me rename this final i'm going to write this data frame into a parquet file so let me copy the name here paste it here dot write and you know that we are going to use the mode overwrite just in case if i have any file name uh, with this in that path it gets overwrite then I'm going to write it to a parquet file and here I'm using an F string here just to just to put a output file name and the name of that output file name is somewhere here you can see uh, output files let me show you that I have derived that in other notebook and you can see that notebook is here I have derived this as output files okay so I'll pick up a name from here it is output file let me put it like this inside an output file i want to save it inside an output file process data i have a file called novel inside that i'm going to save as a complex json so now let me execute this let me execute this and it got executed i guess yeah successfully done let me go back to my azure account and i'll go to the storage and in this i'm going to access the container called in containers input container that input container i'm going to go for the process data i will be processing up uh, like i have processed that data inside a novel i can see i have a complex json let me click on it and you can